Good evening Bahrain. I'm Bernadette from Gulf Brands International. You're watching Wine Online Wednesday. It's now episode 24 and it's the last episode of 2020 and it's called New Year Bubbles. So let's get into some nice sparkling wine that we'll have for New Year's Eve, New Year's Day and keep it going maybe a bit longer. So we've got a nice selection tonight. Um, various, try to get you something as diverse as possible, as you can see. So we're going to start in the USA with cooks from California. Then we're going to go to Italy and we'll have a Prosecco from Emotivo. You've got to have Prosecco. Everyone loves Prosecco. We'll stay in Italy and we'll have a sparkling rosé with a weird grape. It'd be nice to have a look at Da Luca, what they've got going on there. And then the French Champagne. You must have French champagne if you're going to go serious about your sparkles and I think after the year we've had you really need a nice big bottle of French champagne and we're going to have a rosé uh, from Moutard. So let's get popping. So our first wine tonight, Cook's, Cook's Brut and um, these are rather cheeky people from the United States because it's actually written on the label Champagne. Naughty, naughty. Champagne is from the Champagne area in France only. You cannot have Champagne from other regions. Uh, I think by now it has now been officially designated along with things like Parmesan cheese and Stilton cheese and uh, that it's uh, no longer permissible to have the word Champagne on bottles of sparkling wine from other areas, other countries. I know the Australians are still doing some Prosecco from Australia and the Americans will probably still have lashings of Californian champagne because they'll be drinking it in California. So Cook's is a long established winery in California. It's been there since 1859 so it's almost our oldest winery tonight. Uh, founded by Isaac Cook and he was actually the first winery in California to make sparkling wine. So we'll give him some um, some credit and let him use the word champagne I think. So let's see how it is. So we've got our four glasses lined up. I thought I'd go a bit bling this evening since it's for New Year so I've got some gorgeous little goldy tinged blinged up glasses here. So it's a nice this is the lightest colour, so we've got two whites, two rosés, and you see this is actually the lightest, and it's in a brute style. So let's see what it's like on the nose. Oh, very fresh and light. I'm getting a little hint of almond in there. Let's have a taste. Oh, that's very pleasant. It's dry but not too dry. Uh, these are from pretty early harvest grapes in August usually. So they retain a lot of freshness and, and acidity. And for the winemaking technique, the grapes are ever so gently crushed to just start breaking the skins, then pressed a little bit more so that juice starts to come out of uh, the flesh through the skin. And then no more pressing, just the weight is held on the grapes and it's called free run. So it means it, the juice is running freely from the whole press. It, they don't keep squeezing and pressing and pressing uh, to extract as much juice as possible. So they stop the weight and they let the weight of the grapes and the weight of the pneumatic press on top free run and that's the juice they use. After that they continue pressing, but it's used for ordinary table wine, another product. So Cook's prides themselves that they use only the free run juice. And you can get that really quite fresh um, pears. Little hint of citrus. And very, very gentle biscuity taste, which is quite typical of sparkling wines due to the yeast that's used in the second ferment fermentation, which gives you the, the bubbles in the wine. So I think that's a lovely example. 
of a nice classic fresh easy drinking um, this will please anybody perfect party party wine you've got here okay so from California yes Italy and we go for a Prosecco we're going to go to the Veneto home of Prosecco and as I was mentioning about champagne Prosecco must come from the Prosecco region otherwise you cannot call it Prosecco so you will find a lot of Italian sparkling wine spumante sparkling wine if they don't have the word Prosecco they are not actually Prosecco so this is from the house of Emotivo which is up in the Veneto uh, area and they're producing a rather nice uh, Prosecco here which is made from 100% Glera grapes and that is a requirement for any Prosecco it must be made from the Glera grape so let's have a look at this now we've got a deeper yellow color here definitely yes so this has got little greenish glints in it and this one we've got a little bit of a straw yellow goldy color yes so let's see where we are on the nose ah a little bit more subtle than the cooks but very some white flowers a little bit of almond i think Mm. very elegant very refined um, pears a little bit of apple a little bit of citrus it's got a, a more elegant flavor profile there's a little bit more going on in here and very typical of a Prosecco yeah, I think that could go, um, especially if you're having any little Italian themed evening, I think that'll go down very well. We're staying in Italy, we're staying in the north, in the Veneto again, and we're going to go for Da Luca Sparkling Rosé. So this cannot be called Prosecco Rosé because it's not from the Prosecco region and it doesn't have a... Uh, predominance of Glera grapes. Actually, it doesn't have any Glera grapes. But it is from the general region of the Veneto. And it's quite unusual because it's made with 50% Merlot and 50% Raboso, which is a rather unusual Italian grape. So let's have a little taste along the way. So the Di Luca uh, brand was inspired in Sicily, uh, where you can see there's a picture of the sun here. Sicily is famous for having quite intense hot summers which, and a beautiful volcanic island uh, which in, produces very nice wines. And the design of the brand and its inspiration uh, also comes from a game of cards called Scopa which families used, usually pay, play, very colourful playing cards. And it's also uh, originated in the vineyards of the workers in their breaks used to play these cards in the, in the vineyards. So that's where the Daluca name came from. So Daluca are producing still table wines in Sicily, but they also wanted to do sparkling wine. But for sparkling wine, they decided to go up north, up to the Veneto. They do a Prosecco, and they also have this rather charming sparkling rosé. So, as I said, it's a 50% Merlot and Raboso. So let's see what this brings us. Really, really light salmon colour. Very delicate pink here. Almost, almost translucent. It's lovely. So, on the nose, there's, now there's, um, there's Merlot notes coming in here. So we've got some summer fruits. Very gentle. Oh, strawberries. So a little bit of crushed raspberry, but not a sweet finish. It's about the same level of sweetness as the Prosecco, which is pretty typical for um, an Italian sparkling wine. And then... Hmm. This, is, this is rosé all day. You could drink this all day. It's, it goes with food, but I think it's perfect for just sipping and enjoying, especially um, an early lunch when you need something for wine o'clock. 
I think it's really good. So it's got lovely little fruity notes from Merlot and the Rabozo itself is considered to be a bit of a tough grape, a bit aggressive. Um, it's thought that the name comes from Rabioso in Italian which means angry um, but the more practical meaning is probably it's named after the river Rabozo which uh, is in the general area near Piave. So the grape is not used anymore as a single varietal so it's used in a blend so it's quite interesting that it's used here with Merlot to produce this wine given the nature of both grapes that they are quite headstrong grapes this is a beautiful restrained wine and the lovely lovely little strawberry notes are coming through. I think the rebozo is well, helping it as well to calm down the sweetness so that you've got a nice dry finish. Oh, this, is, this is really nice. Very much um, let's get started early wine. And finally the champagne. So champagne can only come from the Champagne area in France. Go to the capital of the area, Reims. Uh, go south, about two hours, and you'll come to the Côte de Bar, which is a rather peculiar little area in Champagne, and where you find a number of small, long-established wineries, which are more like you could call them almost boutique wineries or craft wineries. They do things their own way. And you come to the Moutard property, uh, which in its present form, was uh, the operation started under Lucien Moutard in about 1952, presently run by Francois, but there's uh, documented evidence that they've been producing wine since 17, early 1700s and even before. So I think uh, this is a bit longer established than our friend Cook's here in 1859 over in California. Uh, in this little area of Côte de Bar, it is famous for Pinot Noir, predominantly Pinot Noir. Now Moutard also produce a white uh, champagne which is made from Pinot Noir grapes but with hardly any skin contact so that you keep the white juice from the pressed grapes keeping it white white. In this case we want some colour. We're making a rosé so we want some colour. So it's 100% Pinot Noir and after they've done the, the first crush the grapes with the skin and the juice stay in contact for about four days and quite unusually in wooden vats. Hmm, a bit strange. Normally you'd want your champagne to be rather fresh and zingy and you wouldn't really start it off in wood. But Moutard does, so this takes about four days lingering in drawing some of the elements from the oak through and letting the colour uh, come into the wine as well. So even you can see, even though this is a monster bottle here, this is a magnum, you can see that there is a more intense colour here going on in the moutard compared to the uh, sparkling rosé from Italy. So out of the little Côte de Bar area, 85% uh, of the planting is Pinot Noir, which means a lot of people are focusing on getting the best possible Pinot Noir and especially for a rosé you're going to have a lovely expression here. So let's see how it is. Oh, colour is lovely. Deep salmon, I think I'd call it. Well, this is more like a baby salmon. Got a deep salmon. How are we on the nose? Oh yeah, um, cherries. Signature fruit that you'll find in a Pinot Noir is cherries. And these are, these are sweet cherries but there's also Something going on in the background that I can't quite pick up. Hmm. Beautiful cherries. But a little, little hint of tartness. And a very, very slight um, pink peppercorn almost element. I don't want to emphasise it, it's just, just there in the background just to tone down the sweetness so that it isn't something which is more in the uh, Daluca style. You do have more sweetness coming through. Very refined, very elegant. And there's more toast coming through here and there's more of a biscuity flavour, probably because this has been aged for three years in the bottle, aged on lees, on the yeast. 
So that's where you get these vanilla y toasty, like brioche kind of flavour coming through. While the other wines are uh, fermented in steel tanks, champagne, second fermentation is in the bottle. So you've got lees in each bottle, which is affecting the taste of the bottle. Oh, beautiful Pinot Noir, beautiful. In the area, um, before they actually started making champagne, monks were making red wine from the Pinot Noir that was there. So you do have a long history of vines in the, in the area itself before they started to focus on champagne. Ah, oh, lovely. Okay, so New Year's Eve, just round the corner. Got a little selection. The dry style would be Cooks from California, a nice brut. Everyone loves Prosecco, so it's always good to have a Prosecco on hand. Why not go for a nice rosé and hmm, Merlot, a little bit of hinty of Merlot in there, still refined and elegant. And you cannot have uh, Bonanet without your French champagne. Let's go for a Moutard. And since we've had a horrible 2020, let's go large and let's get a nice big bottle of Moutard. So all that remains, I wish you all the best. Let's look forward to 2021. Uh, on behalf of the director of these videos, John Paul Fox and myself, I'd like to thank you for joining us on our Wednesday evenings. We're looking forward to seeing you again in 2021. We'll be doing more tastings and there are more little events coming up as well. So all the best. Bonne année. Looking forward to 2021.